Hi, I'm Chen. Let's watch the video and learn more about the North American Porcupine, Part 2. One, distribution and habitat. In eastern North America, porcupines range from Canada to the Appalachian Mountains in West Virginia and Maryland. In the west, they range from Alaska to northern mountains in Mexico. They are commonly found in coniferous and mixed forested areas, but have adapted to harsh environments such as shrublands and tundra. They make their dens in hollow trees or in rocky areas. 2. Ecology 2.1 Diet During the summer, they eat twigs, roots, stems, berries, and other vegetation. In the winter, they mainly eat conifer needles and tree bark. Porcupines are selective in their consumption. For example, out of every 1,000 trees in the Catskill Mountains, Porcupines will only eat from one to two linden trees and one big-toothed aspen. 2.2 Behavior Porcupines are nearsighted and slow-moving. They are mainly active at night. On summer days, they often rest in trees. They do not hibernate, but sleep in and stay close to their dens in winter. The strength of the porcupine's defense has given it the ability to live a solitary life unlike many herbivores, which must move in flocks or herds. Consequently, the porcupine has an extraordinary ability to learn complex mazes and to remember them as much as a hundred days afterward. 2.3 Defense The North American porcupine has specific behaviors to warn or defend against predators. The defense strategy is based on opposmatism in several modalities. It has a strong warning odor which it can increase when agitated. When threatened, an adult porcupine can bristle its quills, displaying a white stripe down its back, and use its teeth to make a warning, clacking sound. If the olfactory, visual, and auditory warnings fail, then it can rely on its quills. An adult porcupine when attacked turns its rear to the predator. When approached, the porcupine can swing its tail at an attacker's face. Despite popular myth, the porcupine does not throw its quills. Instead, when a quill comes in contact with the attacker, it can easily penetrate and become embedded in its skin. Each quill contains microscopic barbs which allow it to stick into the flesh of an attacker. This strategy is successful against most attacks with a face full of quills. An attacking creature often retreats. The porcupine's last line of defense is to climb a tree. 2.4 Predators Natural predators of this species include fishers, a cat-sized mustelid, wolverines, coyotes, wolves, American black bears, and cougars, as well as humans. The only known avian predators of this species are golden eagles and great horned owls. In many cases, injury or even death may occur in the predator from embedded porcupine quills even if they are successful in dispatching the porcupine. The North American porcupine is most at risk from the fisher, Pecania penanti, the male of which weasel relation may sometimes exceed a mass of 5.5 kg. Fishers have two advantages that make them capable hunters of the porcupine. First, they are agile tree climbers, and may force a fleeing porcupine from a tree to the ground. Where it is more vulnerable, there it will try to present its hindquarters and tail to the attacker with the predator circling around and attempting to attack the prey. After repeated attacks, the porcupine eventually weakens, allowing the fisher to flip the porcupine over, rip open its underbelly, and consume its organs without exposing itself to the still dangerous quills. One study suggested that since male fishers are considerably larger than females, often weighing on average twice as much, only males are likely to hunt porcupines. 
It appears that female fishers usually favor prey such as snowshoe hares. Another effective predator is the cougar. It does not avoid the quills so much as seek to avoid being impaled by too many of them. Some individuals have been found with dozens of quills embedded in their gums to no ill effect. It can climb trees, so its favorite method is to position itself below the porcupine and knock it to the ground, quickly dispatching it. Other predators, such as canids, may attack but do not pose much of a threat. In some parts of the Great Basin, cougars have greatly decreased numbers of porcupines in mountainous forests through predation. However, in some cases porcupine quills have indeed killed cougars, although usually this is after the cougar has already consumed the porcupine.